Hi guys. So, um, uh, as promised, I was telling everybody why I love using tennis balls, not only because they're the two buck chuck for self myofascial release, but also because they come in packs of three for $2 and 50 cents at like usually at Walgreens or Target or whatever. Um, and I think that they do that for me <laughs> because the pack of three works really, really well. You always take one of them. You use that for foot rolling. Watch my foot rolling video if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, or you can use it for any of the manual stuff that we do whenever we um, feel like it's too hard to put our full body weight onto a foam roller. Um, but yeah, you can use these, uh, the one for pretty much anywhere on the body. But the other two, what I love to do is duct tape those suckers together or put them into a sock and tie them at the end so that they stay together. And you can roll all the way up and down your spine. And what's really nice about it is that you've got the width of the tennis balls on either side that really presses into the braid-like muscles that go along the side of the spine. So you're a multifidus, you're a rectus spinae, all of that stuff. Um, some really great musculature that we really like to get into. And it's hard areas to get. I like to end my class with just going straight up the spine from the bottom to the top and then out through the shoulders um, to kind of kind of leave the class feeling a little bit less tense than when they walked in, especially if the class had a lot of squats or lunges where the back can t tend to get a little bit tight. Um, so what I usually will do is just kind of spend five minutes at the very end of class to kind of dedicate to doing that. It leaves them feeling awesome at the end of the class and they usually deserve it by then too because I kill them. Um, so um, I've got right here, it's black, it's the only color duct tape that I had so it may be hard to see, but just know that this is two tennis balls side by side that have been duct taped together. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way up from the bottom, of, meaning by my tailbone, and then work your way all the way up through to the top, and then I separate and go over um, the, the tops of the shoulder blades in the upper trapezius area with two balls that are separated. So that's my favorite way to do it. So the postures for this is, you start off, place it underneath, right at the base of the low back, and just kind of relax. Just let them feel the weight go into it. And, and this will be foreign kind of feeling for a lot of people. Just kind of let them accept that pressure and really relax on top of it, because that's the biggest thing, is not tensing up whenever you feel. It's just like when the massage therapist, when, they, when you tense up and they hit that rough spot, what do they tell you to do? Relax, it's the same thing. And from there, you just kind of inch your way up if you feel in this low back region that you can um, uh, kind of accelerate it a little bit more, you can have them do some marching, lifting the leg to put a little bit more pressure on it. You can also go both legs up in the air if they feel comfortable with that and just kind of hang out. This is awesome. <laughs> then from there, you keep on working your way up until you get to the bottom of the ribs and you can kind of relax there. At this point, you can start playing with arm movements. Um, it's a little bit too high for you to really get into doing um, this kind of stuff. It might be a little bit too much pressure for that area. Um, but you can start having them do arm movements to kind of move the shoulder blades and have the lats and the lower trapezius kind of open up a little bit. And then you keep on working your way up. Now at this point, I'm at the bottom of my shoulder blades. This place is where you can really just feel um, the body sink. You have a lot of weight right there. You let the weight just sink down there and breathe into it. Once you get a little bit higher into in between your shoulder blades, a little harder to get in there, but you get into that thoracic region right between the shoulder blades. This is where you might want to go into kind of a kind of a crunch position, hands are holding onto your head so you're not tensing up too much, and you can uh, pull your, the body weight of their, the weight of your head will assist in putting that pressure. And then again, if your neck feels fine with this, you can go into some arm movements. Arm movements are like giving yourself a hug, arms reaching up, you can actually reach your fingertips up to try and separate the shoulder blades. Any of that stuff is good, as long as you're relaxing on top of it. Once you get to the top of the shoulder blades, this is when I would utilize the two separate tennis balls, and we're gonna go all the way out the back, okay? So take the tennis balls, start through the center, and then you lift your hips up against it and try and relax your arms, really, really relax them on the floor, and just put as much pressure as you feel like you're able to control without tensing up at all. And then from there, keep the arms relaxed for these ones, and you just reposition with the balls separating more and more and just push. And the push is not just your hips up. If you feel like you want to, you can push and drive that way with your legs and push into the balls. As long as your arms are relaxed and not uh, gripping anything, you'll get a good release. That is an awesome way to end your class if you've got an extra couple of minutes or just do it as a standalone practice for yourself. It's really awesome. You'll feel like butter afterwards. Um, comment below. Feel free to request any other roles um, uh, or any kind of self-myofascial release. I'm always happy to deliver and give you my tricks of the trade. Feel free to share, comment below all of that stuff. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time with your self-myofascial release, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.